Drew Landry asks, Eric, why didn't we see Bret Hart versus Hogan when you were in charge of WCW? Was Bret mentally done? Did Hulk not want to do it? To me, that matches money. Uh, none of the above. Um, I've mentioned before, and with all due respect to Bret, because I try really hard not, not to be negative. Look, Bret Hart, amazing performer in a class all of his own when it comes to in-ring performance and his, his technical abilities. Uh, I, I loved watching Bret Hart matches. I still do because of the, the, the level of almost perfection that he had in some ways in the ring. Uh, but when Brett got to WCW, he had gone through a lot. He was, you know, the M Montreal Screwjob thing had much more of an impact on him than most people know, and maybe even more than he's willing to admit at this point in time. But he, there was no rush. It wasn't that. I don't want to suggest that because of that, I didn't book Hogan right away with Brett. No. It's because when I brought Brett in, it was because of Thunder. Mm. It was because Ted Turner was determined to bring in Thunder. I knew to avoid the dilution, dilution of the product that I could see coming, I had to separate the rosters so that you didn't have talent crossing over constantly because then you now you've got five hours of primetime wrestling on uh, a week, and it's, it's just no way to sustain that from a creative perspective right now. One of the hottest shows on television is Yellowstone. Can you imagine if there was five hours of Yellowstone available that, that, that audience would deteriorate so quickly. It would make people's heads spin. And I saw that freight train coming too much dilution. So what was my option? Okay. I'm going to bring in some different talent, new mm -hmm. talent that we hadn't already seen on nitro because they were already many of them overexposed, especially that upper, that upper card. So that's why I brought in Bret Hart. But when I brought him in, it was more for a long-term creative strategy than, a, okay, let's make as much money with Bret Hart as we can. Let's book Hogan and Bret because we want to do that right away. It was just, no, that was antithetical. Google it. Um, antithetical to the way I wanted to approach things creatively. And Hogan and Bret were going to be there, but I wanted a build up to it. I wanted it to matter. I wanted there to be a great story. I didn't want to, you know, be the dirt sheet booker of the year and put together a dream match um, without a long-term strategic plan. And it would have been too soon. Honestly, Hogan would have loved to work with Bret. Hogan would want to make sure Bret's head was on straight because <laughs> right. Hogan and Brett had issues in WWE. That's part of that. It didn't just happen in WCW. Brett and Hogan had a lot of issues, and I heard Hogan's side of the story where they had to work those issues out in front of Vince McMahon, and Bret Hart ended up walking out the door with his head down and his tail between his legs. That And that existed long before Hogan or Brett came, excuse me, yeah, Brett came to WCW. But even despite that, I was like, yeah, man, that's money. We'll do that. But not next month. Right. <laughs> you know? That's a dirt sheet wrestling fan or dirt sheet booker of the year move. Um, it wouldn't have been a long-term strategic move. Uh, his follow-up question. In the WCW era, were there any matches you look back at now that seem surreal from a talent standpoint? Sting and Warrior versus Brett and Hogan always felt like a fever dream to me, says Gavin. Yeah, there were some real misses there as well that were just bizarre and it seemed like a fever dream. I get that. But to me, you know, anytime I go back and I watch matches in the cruiserweight division with Eddie or Chris or Dean, uh, Chris Jericho, um, a lot of the luchadors, I, you know, occasionally Conrad and I will cover a show and I have to go back and watch something that I probably have never seen before, you know, because I was there live and didn't go back and watch it at home. It was on to the next show. So every once in a while when we do these, you know, way backs and I have to go back and watch something that I haven't seen since 1996 or seven or eight or whatever, I go back and I see some matches that to me seem surreal. They're so fantastic and so cutting edge in so many ways for that time that it blows me away. Uh